We're doing something a little unique today. We got out on this small lake. I'm out here with Kobe. Oh, and look, at, and, it, and it wasn't happening. So we ended up switching our location to some of these woody banks on this lake and switching up to hard baits. And we did that because we saw just piles of bluegill and crappie around. So rather than go with a jerk bait with a more slender minnow profile, we kind of upsized to this Twitch Reaper, which is a classic twitching style bait that you see so commonly in saltwater environments and it really does catch everything. And to me, I, they're a tremendous jerk, jerk bait substitute or when bass are really conditioned to conventional jerk baits. I mean, most good bass anglers are, are well aware that jerk baits are an absolute dominant lure in the early part of the season, cold water on up through the post spawn and they work all year as well but they have a bill on it. And what that bill does is it constrains the movement of the bait a little bit. So a good twitch bait, and again, saltwater guys use the heck out of them for redfish, snook, tarpon, a whole host of different species. Because of that erratic nature, they're a little bit more freestyle than a jerk bait. And this particular bait has a little bit bigger profile, which, which I like. I think it makes a difference when there's a bunch of bait fish that's a little bit broader in profile bluegill in this case, and we've been seeing crappie too. So the bluegill are coming up to spawn. They're, they're flooding the shallows. The bass are, are just finishing up their spawn and they're just kind of commingling now on this first break. And we've been taking advantage of some of these shade lines. And it's been a lot of fun. You'll see from the underwaters, I mean, largemouth and bluegill are, are really mixed heavily here. And the nice thing about bluegill and, and bait selection is bluegill, they exist everywhere throughout the country. A lot of different sunfish species. So there usually always is a bluegill pattern and a twitch bait is definitely, I, I, I think one of the more overlooked baits for bass. Jerk baits get all the press and I think that's a mistake. I've just seen it enough now transitioning between inshore saltwater environments and seeing how effective they are at triggering very difficult fish to catch you know smart snook redfish it, it has kind of opened up my eye to the versatility of a twitch bait and a quite a bit different profile than a conventional jerk bait and more of an ability to free form that bait you can go subtle with a light twitch twitch you can straight reel it and stop and you can jerk it throw slack in the line and watch that bait veer off to each side it's a really incredible triggering lure and our team recently was out kayak fishing and filming on a smallmouth lake and they wrecked the smallmouth on the 77 millimeter twitch reaper which is a, a little bit downsized version one thing that is important when you have a huge amount of forage in an area is is throwing something there's a bass chasing me right there but throwing a lure that has a, a significantly different action than than the forage so and to see a bluegill sitting here motionless and kind of cruising around throwing something radical that disrupts the school of fish and actually triggers the forage up to come look at that bait is a great way to trigger bass into, you know, into feeding as well. This one happens to be a floating model. So we're fishing around a lot of laydowns here. There's all kinds of cedar trees along this bank. So there's a bass. We don't want a bait that gets down deep. They have a suspending model as well. Something that you might fish, say like on 12, you know, 14, 15 pound fluorocarbon, but you can get that a little deeper. Today we want to keep that bait up in the water column a little bit. So the floating one with your rod up in the air seems to be, you know, the right combination. We're not getting hung up fishing it on a medium power rod. This, ha this is 14 pound fluorocarbon line here and it's working just fine. At the horsepower I need to get the fish up and out of that cover if I need to. Rod setup simple. I'm fishing a seven foot one medium power fast action rod today. The medium power just to have a little bit of give in that rod tip with treble hooks. And I have an eight to one Daiwa Tatula here for quick line pickup. It's nice to have a fast reel, something in that seven one, seven five to one to eight to one range just for line pickup between the jerks. We're in clear water today. So, you know, what do you choose for a color? I typically like a bait that gives me some feedback. So I like to be able to see the bait in the water if the water clarity allows. So I want a bait that throws off some flash. This color here has a cool halo effect where I can see it. So the bait color to me is almost like a strike indicator or it reveals fish. 
at, and at the same time, it allows me to work that bait a little better. I can see what that bait's doing. I'll make a roll cast up into the shade. Start, start working that bait. Just throw some pauses in it periodically. See what the fish want. Sometimes they want it fast and really erratic like that. We've kind of caught them doing everything today. You know, a lot of guys will, will, ch will fish post spawn kind of cruising bass that are still up on the bank with Neko rigs or Senko, you know, wacky rigs, and that's fine. But definitely don't give up on the moving baits at that time. They can still trigger the heck out of the bass, particularly when you do find that the gills are coming up and those, and those bass are coming out and they're meeting. Throw something in there that disrupts the school, gets the forage in a lather, gets those bass honed in on that bait. <laughs> 